I gotta get to the member of the month video shoot. Hey Mark, are you here to pick up or make an order? Hey John, I've had fajita peach on my mind all week long. Great, I'm glad I built a great reputation. Yes, you have. And I'm here to congratulate you for being the January member of the month. Congratulations. So tell us all, what's the story behind Fajita Pete's? So Pete, the founder of Fajita Pete's, uh, was, he used to be my client. I used to be in banking in Houston. So whenever we would have an office meeting, we'd always cater from Fajita Pete's. And that's how I got actually familiar with the food. So like I mentioned, Mark, originally, you know, we're from Houston. Uh, so my wife was recruited by a children's hospital here in Dallas, uh, and she moved here in 2015. Uh, while the boys were still in school, we, you know, stayed in Houston up until April 16th when we officially moved to South Lake uh, in, in April 16th. Um, and so two years after we had moved to South Lake, I found out that Pete was franchising finally. And so we decided, you know, to take the, the, the plunge and, you know, kind of, you know, go forth with the buying five franchises from, from Pete. You know, John, the last two years have been very difficult for small businesses due to the pandemic. What advice would you give to someone that is planning a startup? I mean, the, this past year has been challenging. We were supposed to originally open in March of 2020. Uh, a lot of moving parts, you know, my wife uh, was furloughed from the hospital in 2020. I'm leaving uh, a, my, a job at a financial firm in the same time frame, and we're starting the restaurant at the beginning of the pandemic. I mean, truthfully, I mean, it was very, very nerve wracking, but you know, it's, it's kind of always been one of my, my mindsets that, you know, if you don't have the, if you don't take the risk, there's, there's no reward. So though, you know, the, during that pandemic, I mean, it, it was kind of un, unforeseen what was going to happen. I mean, we still push forward and we just, I mean, we're already in it. We had already paid our franchise rights. We had done so much to do the, all the build that there was no way to turn it back. So, I mean, just, we have to push forward and just, you know, try to make the best that you can with what you got. Other than feeding the community, you've been very active in the community. Tell me about some of the things you've been involved with. We have two boys in the district. So, you know, with, with them being dragons, I mean, you know, we, we're all part of this community. Um, and realistically, during COVID, I mean, the community's really, you know, blessed us with, you know, supporting us. So what a better way than to, you know, give back to a lot of the, the uh, organizations in and around the city. I mean, you know, there's, uh, you know, from the ISD to, you know, the Meals and Wheels and, uh, you know, even events that we, we uh, have with the Chamber. You know, I've been working open to close here since the very, very beginning. So I've been very, very dedicated to, you know, working um, to, to really give, you know, quality to, you know, what we put our, our efforts in. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't say that, you know, if it had not been because of our dedication, uh, that realistically, I don't think that we would have had uh, as good support that we've had from the community.